So you're thinking of starting a fall crop. I'm in zone three to put that into perspective and that's one of the lowest zones in Canada. Now, with that being said, you can still fall crop in our zone, but there are three things you need to take into consideration when choosing what plants to grow and whether or not this is worth your time. So step one is actually the sowing of the seed. Now you can start with starts or you can actually sow them physically in the ground as we're starting to pull stuff off of the garden. Now, what you're looking for is the days to harvest. Now, the key here is not to choose plants based on days to harvest to first frost, because the idea of fall cropping is that we're going to have some form of cover, whether that's a low tunnel or a cold frame. The idea here is more so to find plants that are harvestable before your daylight hours get less than 10. Now, you can do a quick Google to determine when your daytime hours begin to decrease or go down. And you're going to find for most of us, it's sometime in mid-October to mid-November when we have less than the 10 hours needed to be in growth cycle. So if you wanted to grow spinach, for example, you have more than enough time if you were to start them outdoors here in the beginning of September. You can put plants in right now that are anywhere from 40 to 50 days to harvest and still be okay. Well, we're going to get into this a little bit more here, but ultimately plants need a minimum of 10 hours of sunlight in order to be in an active growth cycle, meaning putting on new leaves, putting on flowers, putting on root mass. If we're less than 10 hours, what tends to happen is the plant will go into a dormancy and really start to um, just go into preservation mode where the plant will be okay, it'll be alive, but it just won't be actively growing. So unless you're going to supplement these outdoor cold frames with light, you have to rely on the sun, which is covered in smoke right now, but regardless, and you're gonna need 10 plus hours of it. The second thing is actually going to be coverings. The nighttime temperatures are going to get cold, and this is where coverings come into effect. Now, cold frames, low tunnels, you name it, as long as it's not a high tunnel or a larger area, tend to be 10 degrees warmer than that of your outdoor environment. Now, it can get higher than that, and that's particularly true when we have sun um, and it's daytime. That it can actually get 20 degrees higher than what the ambient temperatures are. So, what we're concerned about is nighttime temps, though, because those are a little bit more difficult to control. So if you know in mid-October that your nighttime temperatures are getting to say minus five, we know we're still okay using a low tunnel or some sort of cold frame to fall garden up until the point in which we harvest or past that. And that's because we know our nighttime temperatures are going to be 10 degrees 10 degrees warmer than our nighttime temps. So the second thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is Googling what the nighttime temp average is for October, November, for not your zone, but for your city, where you physically are. If you find that your nighttime temperatures are only getting to minus eight <laughs> on average, that's probably about as low as you could go without now having to put some, some sort of supplemental heat in there, which is totally possible. I have videos on that. But ultimately, if you can tell it doesn't, your nighttime temps are minus eight up until about end of October, which is pretty normal, by the way. You now know that fall cropping without any additional electricity or additives is totally possible where you are. So we know how many hours of light we have and when those hours start to dip below 10 degrees Celsius. We also know that we can use low tunnels or cold frames to help keep our plants elevated 10 degrees at night. Uh, and we know that our temperatures only get to be about minus eight at the coldest until it's time to harvest. Number three in the third phase of winter fall gardening is actually the preservation phase. If you're growing spinach, arugula, lettuce, all these plants, kale, collard greens, carrots, beets, you name it. So long as you can keep both the ground in which the roots are in and the ambient surrounding area, above or close to freezing, you will have plants that will be preserved and not actively growing, but sustaining themselves in your cold frame, um, low tunnel environment. So at this point, 
active growing has ended. You're not going to get any new foliage, but you're in storage mode, meaning you're able to utilize those cold frame environments as a fridge or a cold storage in the fall and winter months. The key here is that the plants are only harvested when it's warm enough to harvest or you're able to prevent the plants from getting hit with any sort of frost and also ensuring that the plants inside are snug and cozy. So what this means is that we don't care so much about photosynthesizing, meaning we don't care about the light getting into the tunnel and having to remove the blankets or whatever else is in place to help keep that environment warm. What we do care about, however, is actually keeping the space ambiently and the root environment above freezing or in and around freezing. So this is when you're going to utilize things like blankets or tarps to help keep that heat in. On nights that are particularly cold, you may want to put a heat sink in such as a hot water bottle or a heating mat or even candles will help with this. And this should sustain you well into probably I would say end of December where I am um, longer in some cases. Once January, February hits, I will say quite honestly, zone three, you're it's, uh, you're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna have a really hard time. It's gonna be a ton of energy to keep that crop going. And that is when you should indoor garden. <laughs> Seriously, the indoor gardening is totally worth it. But this year, I am gonna be doing some fall winter gardening and I'm going to just kinda show you guys how it's going, what the process looks like. I have some slight concerns about the seed starting process here because it is so darn smoky. It's like really, really smoky um and i mean yeah it's it's harmful it, it it affects how plants grow it affects how they photosynthesize everything so just even the seed starting process may be difficult uh but we'll see we'll see if i can get something going and uh growing effectively in this season right now. So I'm gonna start some seeds here right away. If you want to see what seeds I start, how I start them, go head over to Instagram. I do do like daily updates over on, in there. So if you wanna see what that looks like, go check that out. But that is what I'm gonna do and I will show you guys kind of step-by-step step what I encounter and how I counteract it or if it just, this falls flat for me entirely. You have to enjoy gardening to do the fall winter uh, cropping. By this point in the season, you're probably pretty close to tired. I know I am. I enjoy, I do enjoy gardening. It's just this, it's definitely a restart. And I like to take October off. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to start some seeds and then we'll, we'll go from there. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you garden nerds later. See ya.